friends, family, colleagues, welcome. Welcome to this uh, webinar to launch, to mark the launch of the health system review for Slovenia. One often starts speeches by saying it's a privilege to be here, it's a privilege to be moderating, starting this session. But more than ever today, it is a privilege to be here and launch this just delivered baby, the health system in transition profile for Slovenia. And it is a privilege to be here also because uh, we are amidst the Council Presidency of Slovenia, of the European Union. Uh, tomorrow in the informal council, we'll have the opportunity to distribute and present the health systems profile for Slovenia to all ministers and delegations present here and virtually as well. And it's particularly a, a pleasure to be here because of my personal history with Slovenia. Uh, believe it or not, in 96, I was here, we were here in the first conference on health systems organized by the WHO. And since then, I've been a keen student. I learned so much from the reforms and the developments in Slovenia. So three main reasons to be very happy today and warmly welcome you to be here with us. I won't take much of your time because we need to hear the protagonist today. Uh, we'll have first the Secretary of State uh, welcoming us and giving us so, some remarks, to then followed by uh, the Institute of Public Health is going to be speaking, Kit Albrecht and my colleague at the observatory, Kate Pollin. And then we'll have the WHO, we'll have the European Commission, and we'll have Slovenia uh, giving comments, debating the results of this hit, of this study, as well as the implications for other systems and we, what we can learn from each other. Very, very much at the core of what actually this presidency of the European Union led by Slovenia is about, learning from each other. So it's really exciting to have the learnings of the hit of the health system review for Slovenia. So I'll introduce everyone as they speak. So first of all, it's a real pleasure to introduce Franz Vindichar, the Secretary of State uh, for Slovenia, who's going to welcome us, as I said. Uh, Franz, if I may, you must be really proud. I, I was really impressed to read so many of the innovations and developments that we've seen in Slovenia in recent years, in many years, actually, but in recent years in particular, how you manage with the innovation, with digital, with primary care, with public health. There's a lot to do, like everywhere else, of course, but you must be really pleased, right? Yeah, I'm very proud for, for my colleagues in the Ministry of Health and also National Institute of for Public Health that they perform such very great job. And I hope that this book will go to live. I hope so. That's the whole idea. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much, Hans. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, thank you for joining us. Uh, at the launch event of the Slovenian Health System Review, which is a part of the Health Systems in Transition series. I would like to thank colleagues from the National Institute of Public Health of Slovenia and European Observatory on Health Systems and Policies for their excellent work in preparing a comprehensive overview. In Slovenia, we are proud that we have one of the lowest rates of out-of-pocket spending in EU, which is due to extensive uptake of voluntary health insurance. On the other hand, we are aware that we need to find innovative solution to address more challenges, such long waiting times for some health services. In the past two decades, we have achieved notable improvements which regards to population health status. We have seen an increase in average life expectancy, which is for the first time about the EU average. However, we have to keep in mind that many of the health inequities pers persist due to a different social economic determinants also, but also due to difference in health literacy and patient empowerment. 
One of the important messages of this review is that our health sector is vulnerable to economic and labor market fluctuations while population is aging. Furthermore, we need to address health workforce planning, invest in some outdated facilities, integrate health system performance assessment, as well as implement current long-term care reform. These are some, some of the key steps to ensure long-term sustainability while ensuring stronger resilience of, the, of our health system, to ensure capacity for service delivery and quality of care. On the positive side, the review also describes several important organizational cha changes that are underway or have already been implemented in Slovenia, mostly in the area of prevention and primary health care, emergency care, and of course, long-term care. This review comes five years after the previous one, and it will be an important source of really reliable and comprehensive information. They will support our decisions in the preparation of future, future reforms and investments in our health systems. It will also enable appropriate comparison between our systems and perhaps inspire our countries. In this way, or another for international collaboration in developing and implementing innovative solutions in response to present the future challenges. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Vindishar. Uh, thank you, one, to highlight the successes, but also the candid uh, presentation of some of the challenges and particularly the new directions you want to go. We'll be taking those after the presentation of our colleagues in detail and we'll have a debate later on. Thank you very okay. much thank for you. sharing thank you, your Andy. time with good, us. Good job. Thank you yeah, very thank much. You. Thank Bye. you. I would like now to introduce uh, uh, my colleagues. Uh, and first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Tit Albrecht. He's the head of the health systems uh, department at the National Institute of Public Health here in Slovenia. Tit Albrecht is very well known by many, many, if not all of you, not only for his work in Slovenia, but his work uh, of research and comparisons all across the European region. And also, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague, Kate Polin. Uh, she is uh, working uh, at the TUB, hub of the European Observatory. Uh, Tit and Kate work very closely together with uh, a number of experts that I'm sure they will mention in a minute to do what I think is a really, really good analysis of the health system in Slovenia. They both will have a, a double act to present that. And after that, uh, and throughout, we'll have questions from you. I have Dimi Pantelli here in Ljubljana with me today to run the chat, to help me moderating, and Nicole Maurer from the Observatory Headquarters also supporting us with running the chat. So please come in as much as possible, clarifications, questions, wherever you like, uh, during uh, these presentations, and later also as I'll introduce in a minute, after these presentations, the, the, the roundtable we will have with a number of experts. So uh, let me then ask, uh, I believe uh, uh, Kate will start with the presentation of the results of the health system review, followed by Tid. Again, Kate and Tid, thank you from the bottom of my heart for the enormous work you have done uh, with this work, with this uh, review. Over to you. Good afternoon, Secretary. Good afternoon, Giuseppe. Thank you for your kind words uh, in setting the stage for our presentation. And thank you, everyone. Um, good afternoon. And thank you for coming to this launch of the fourth edition of the Slovenia Health System in Review, uh, or HIT report, within the European Observatory on Health Systems and Policies, Health Systems and Transition Series, as the Secretary noted. Just a note on who the observatory is and what the Health System in Transition series 
is as well. The observatory is a partnership bringing together different policy perspectives to identify and generate evidence on health systems and policies that Europe's decision makers need. It has four core functions, country monitoring, analysis, performance assessment, and knowledge brokering. The HIT is one long-standing activity that touches on each of these functions, systematically reviewing and evaluating countries' health systems based on a template to enable cross-country comparison while retaining rich country detail and context. The current HIT builds on the work of colleagues since 2002, providing a somewhat historical perspective of the Slovenian health system and was a team effort as its previous editions before it um, with colleagues from Slovenia, the National Institute of Public Health primarily and the observatory. We were also supported by the Ministry of Health and the National Health Insurance Institute of Slovenia. We had the pleasure of working with two external reviewers whom I'd like to thank here, Dr. Dorian Marusic and Dr. Dian Kringos. The HIT template stipulates certain descriptive information and quantitative indicators to be used to enable this internationally comparable look at a country's health system, structuring the health system review across eight dimensions. These align with the eight main chapters of the HIT. That being said, we would now like to take you on a journey of the main findings of the Slovenia HIT, which is based on existing up-to-date national and international reports and complemented by expert input. To set the stage, I'd like to give a quick introduction of the health system, two pieces of legislation, the Health Care and Health Insurance Act and the Health Services Act, both from 1992, underpin the current compulsory social health system. The system is based on a statutory employment-based health insurance with a single payer, the National Health Insurance Institute of Slovenia. Since 1992, a process of negotiation among stakeholders determines services to be provided annually across sectors. This is informed by historical data and predetermined caps. Service provision is relatively centralized with national government responsible for secondary and tertiary care, municipalities oversee primary health care. One salient feature of the system is its community-based primary health care model in the form of community-based primary healthcare centers or CPHCs. These have been around since the early 20th century and represent the first traces of universal health coverage in Slovenia. They are characterized by a strong collaboration between primary health care and public health programs, resulting in multidisciplinary prevention-oriented primary care services near to people's homes. Spending to health in Slovenia trails the EU average on a per capita and share of GDP basis. However, per capita health expenditure has risen since 2000. The system is largely financed by public funding with social contributions shared between employees and employers accounting for more than two thirds. Government funds through general taxation at the municipal and national levels modestly provide the remainder. As the secretary said, among statutory health insurance countries, Slovenia is rather unique in that it relies almost exclusively on payroll contributions to fund its system, making the health sector revenues vulnerable to economic and labor market fluctuations, as well as population aging. Share of private funding has increased since 2014. Private sources include voluntary health insurance premiums and out-of-pocket payments. The share of voluntary health care payment schemes to total health spending is considerably higher than the EU average. Complementary insurance represents the largest share of this, mostly purchased to cover cost sharing levied on health care services included in the statutory benefits package. About 72% of the population, or 95% of the, those liable for cost sharing, have complementary insurance. Household out-of-pocket payments, in part due to such extensive uptake in complementary insurance, are among the lowest in the EU. The system provides near universal coverage, more than 99% of the population, for a comprehensive list of services. 
Full financial coverage is offered for some services, such as those related to cancer, infectious diseases, family planning, emergency care, and for children and students up to the age of 26, among others. All other services involve a coinsurance determined in agreement between the Health Insurance Institute and the government, ranging from 10 to 90% of the cost. As noted, most of these potential costs are offset by complementary insurance. Several payment mechanisms for services exist, depending on type of service and setting. Primary health care, as aforementioned, is mainly delivered by a network of 63 CPHCs owned and managed by municipalities and by a range of providers. Secondary level outpatient care is accessed mainly by referral from a primary care physician acting as a gatekeeper. These are historically characterized by long waiting times. Since the early 2000s, there has been a policy shift from providing care in inpatient to outpatient settings, encouraged by several financial incentives, including the same price being paid for outpatient services as for inpatient procedures, despite the lower costs. Lastly, and Dr. Tit Albrecht will speak more to this in the discussion on the reform agenda later on, there is no single overarching regulation for long-term care currently. However, a Long-Term Care Act was drafted in 2017, which introduces a systemic regulation of long-term care. It is currently in the phase of interministerial harmonization and is expected to be adopted later this year. There have been important gains in health status in Slovenia. This is evidenced in the increases in life expectancy, which surpassed the EU average for the first time in 2019 and was 81.6 years. This puts Slovenia alongside Denmark and Germany. The year 2020 for Slovenia as well as others was a notable exception, however, as average life expectancy at birth dropped by one year from 2019 due to high rates of COVID-19 related deaths. Life expectancy is now back to 2013 levels. Similar to other countries in the region, the main causes of death are circulatory diseases and malignant neoplasms, which are together responsible for three quarters of all deaths. Stroke, ischemic heart disease, and lung cancer are the main single conditions driving mortality. Five-year survival rates for prostate, breast, cervical, colon, and lung cancer have gradually improved. For people diagnosed between 2010 and 14, they almost all surpassed or reached the EU averages. This speaks to the various screening programs launched since 2000 in Slovenia. Behavioral and environmental risk factors are associated more, uh, with more than one third of all deaths. In particular, poor nutrition, tobacco, and alcohol are all public health concerns, especially among adolescents. Notably, smoking rates and alcohol consumption rates have decreased since 2000, smoking rates in adults by 5%, um, and smoking among 15-year-olds by about 7%, though alcohol consumption remains high in regional comparisons. And though mortality, mortality excuse me, due to liver disease has reduced, Slovenia still has some of the highest death rates for diseases due to alcohol abuse in the region. Given all of this movement, the assessment of the health system, chapter seven of the HIT, um, is quite interesting. And I'm very happy to hand the following segments over to Tit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kate. I will go straight forward. Thank you for this uh, initial presentation. Um, let's move on with the next slide, Kate. Yes, of course, um, one of the challenges that the Slovenian healthcare system has as a, actually still as a chronic challenge is lower density of physicians and lower density for registered nurses. Uh, although a lot of effort has been invested in, in the last more than 20 years uh, to increase the number of physicians, and you can see uh, the density of physicians uh, presented here rising by quite a substantial percentage uh, over the time. Uh, there, are, there are still shortages 
especially for uh, primary care physicians, uh, both uh, pediatricians and uh, family doctors. For nurses, uh, the demand is particularly high uh, in hospitals and the crisis with COVID has only uh, accentuated this, uh, this deficit. And of course, the, some anomal anomalies in the um, salary system, which actually does not distinguish by the severity of work conditions between uh, nursing staff working in hospitals and in uh, outpatient settings, which of course divert many uh, nurses in uh, mid and advanced careers to change their workplace from hospitals to outpatient care. Next. So amenable mortality has improved significantly, as you can see here. Uh, we were not doing OK in the past. Uh, the improve improvements are notable. And you can see how Slovenia has moved down uh, along the lines of this uh, graph on the right hand side. Uh, which, of course, is something that has uh, followed uh, significant prior to prioritization in the healthcare system. Uh, especially good scores were obtained in the lowering the mortality following uh, acute myocardial infarction. Um, some more and important work needs to be done still in uh, addressing the mortality after a stroke, introducing much quicker uh, diagnosis of stroke and intervening more aggressively, such as ha it has been done already with uh, uh, coronary events. Significant reductions in preventable mortality since two, uh, 2000 uh, uh, have also been uh, identified. Here, the improvements are not so dramatic, as you can see. Uh, there was about 10% improvement in the rates. Uh, whereas in amenable mortality, which are more system oriented, uh, they were uh, of uh, more than one third. There is also a project underway to set ground for a national strategy on healthcare quality and safety, which is also very important to note here. Next. In spite of our intense activities, I have to say, uh, compared to the best performers in Europe, and we should look at best performers, uh, there are still some gender and socioeconomic inequalities we, which we have to continue addressing, I would say. Uh, there is the gender gap in life expectancy, which has been significantly reduced. In the 80s, it reached even nine years between men and women. Uh, now the life expectancy gap is down to less than six years. It's about 5.8 years, but that's still quite a lot if you compare to the Nordics where it's just above three years. Uh, socioeconomic inequalities. There are inequalities which, these inequalities are more marked in men than, than in women. In men, uh, the gap between highest education and lowest education in men is about 5.4 years. Very interestingly, at 30 years of age, a man with highest education levels is still expected to live less uh, than a woman with the elementary school education, which is quite interesting uh, in, and confirms the gap uh, in gender. There are, of course, uh, another, another important challenges are uh, in inequalities between regions. Uh, they reflect, of course, inequalities in terms of economic and social status across Slovenia's region, most notably between West and East. But these are addressed at multi-level approaches of the state. So it is, it can, they cannot be addressed only by health uh, or healthcare. Uh, they demand a more concerted action, and that's being done through various governmental programs. Next. So uh, we have achieved something that seemed unachievable. We have switched from the dominance of inpatient care over outpatient care 
now finally to outpatient care uh, in expenditure uh, running above uh, inpatient care. This is an important move. Kate has already stressed this in earlier slides. The share of uh, health expenditure uh, to long-term care was 10.2% in 2019, which is far below the EU average. We have felt this gap, unfortunately, very strongly also in uh, responding to uh, the crisis of COVID, the epidemic. Uh, and this is something that, of course, will be urgently addressed. The average length of stay is decreasing still. Uh, with 6.7 days, it's less than in Germany and Italy, but slightly more than in Austria and Czechia. Hospital discharge rates were initially increasing after the introduction of, uh, of the DRG system, but now started to level off. Uh, it is important to stress that daycare cases have increased since 2017, but there's still substantial work to be done in that respect. Uh, because it will further uh, make the hospital sector more flexible. Next. So uh, this is an, uh, where we are in uh, a quick performance comparison, uh, in comparing the amounts we spend in uh, purchasing power parity dollars per capita compared to our amenable mortality. As you can see, uh, we are not performing that poorly. We have reduced uh, our um, abnormal mortality quite well. We are in the low group of countries. Uh, while we are not, we have not uh, broken the margins of rather still moderate expenditure. Uh, of course. The, the challenges remain, especially in two directions. One is in investing slightly more resources in the right parts of the healthcare system uh, that would yield obviously more significant improvements. And of course, the allocation of resources needs to be based on calculation of population needs and not so much on the inputs that, in other words, on providers. Next one. So what are the achievements that we want to stress in particular? Uh, tobacco control is one point that has been stressed by Kate already. Uh, we have achieved multiple level uh, interventions that are already showing effect. We have completed successfully the self-assessment of essential public health operations. The, uh, report is still off the press, uh, produced by one of our uh, co-authors of the uh, hit, um, Pia Vrachko, from our institute, from our team. And of course, now we will have to do the next step. This is the production of the public health strategy. What is expected to be done is, of course, the digitalization of epidemiological surveillance system and introduction of an electronic-based system for the coding of causes of death. Developments in primary care have also been quite significant, uh, even in the last five years. And uh, reforms are going in the direction for more integrated care, uh, development of health promotion centers, and mental health centers in, in primary care settings. Of course, there has to be an analysis of root causes and of challenges to primary health care to inform primary health care strategy, which is currently under development and is also expected to be developed by the end of this year as mandated by the Ministry of Health. Next one. So, Actions in chronic care are focusing around two main diseases, while in the past, a lot of activity was focused on cardiovascular diseases. Now we have to stress the National Diabetes Management Plan 2020 to 2030, 
and the third edition of the National Cancer Control Plan. We, we had the first one established in 2010 and it lasted until 2015. The second one is about to close its activities and the next one is under final preparations and were launched for the period of 2022 to 2026. The improvements in health workforce. I have already addressed this issue, so I will not dwell too much on, on this issue, but uh, there's, there's an act on recognition of professional qualifications for medical doctors and specialist doctors amended. Uh, there was a task shifting from physicians to registered nurses introduced in 2019, especially in primary care, in the management of chronic patients without complications. Uh, there was an achievement in uh, reduction of number of patients registered uh, at family medicine practices, but this has been done more at the formal level. Now we will have to commission more uh, doctors to work actually in these practices in order to ensure that these uh, numbers will actually drop. And of course, there will have to be a strategy to ensure adequate workforce across locations and areas of care. Uh, the, these preparations are also underway. Next slide, please. Waiting times. Did, did we are slightly running out of time. It's very unfair. We ask you to present yes. the depth and breadth of these reforms in such a little time. But uh, uh, okay. of time. Sorry yes. about that. Yes, uh, Kate, Kate, how many more do we have? Two. two. We have two more slides. Okay, so we, we will run quickly through these. Waiting times, I will not say too much because it has been a frustrating topic for all involved. Uh, there has been extra funding for services or to shorten waiting times uh, envisaged and also put in practice this year already. Uh, LTC Act already mentioned. Uh, there, will be, there's a, uh, there was a new director, now it's a sector. Uh, the implementation of the act, if adopted, will be uh, very speedy. A new capacity will be built into the system. HSPA is a topic that is very dear to my heart, and uh, I think it needs to be implemented more substantially and with more decision on behalf of the Ministry of Health. Next slide. Quality and safety, already mentioned, project underway. Uh, with digitalization in e-health, I need to stress especially what is written in green. Uh, national strategy for digitalization of the healthcare system uh, is in preparation. And of course, significant funds will be also dedicated from the EU Recovery and Resilience Fund for 21 to 26 uh, to, uh, to finance and support this. Next one. So governance is another area which needs strengthening. I'm happy to say that the Ministry of Health has been successful in achieving more staff to be approved from the Ministry of Finance to enlarge the teams of, of uh, Ministry of Health. The ranks will be uh, significantly, significantly much more numbered in the next few years. And uh, of course, uh, what used to be seen as unmanageable, this is our final message, uh, is being reconceived and taken on as new reforms. We have seen this with long-term care, some issues in primary care and also workforce. That's it, right, uh, Kate? Yes, and the final thank, thank you, you for both of us, from both of us. And on behalf of the whole team of authors, I would like to thank the observatory and above all Kate, who has been a precious resource in putting, out, uh, putting up all this work uh, pushing us to uh, meet the deadline and to come to this uh, precious day where we can uh, present our achievements. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Kate, Tit, and all the team of authors that have done this extraordinarily good quality work, which is available in the chat to download and directly in the web of the observatory and soon in the web of the Ministry of Health of Slovenia. Quickly, let me move quickly now to the panel of, 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 of experts that are going to comment on those results. And let me start first uh, with uh, Vesna uh, Kerstin Petrich, Director General of Public Health and a very good friend from many, many years 
Vesna, you personally associated with many of these reforms, primary care, public health, the role of the civil society to put pressure, uh, to make changes on this from inpatient to outpatient sort of a reallocation, but there's still work to do. You made major steps and improvements on preventable mortality, but the still the averages are slightly above um, European average and there's still work to do. What, what are the next steps, Vesna? Yeah, you see uh, our health systems and it's not only Slovenia are all the time in transition because they have to adapt to new challenges. And there are also new opportunities that are there. For example, IT and new technologies, other technologies, there is always something to do. Uh, what we are lucky uh, for here in Slovenia is that we have actually a very good national health plan uh, that was adopted in 2016 and uh, it lasts until 2025. And this gives us a kind, this is a tool that empowers us uh, that we can move forward and uh, actually follow what we are doing strategically. So I think this is really important uh, because all the other strategies are actually implementing this national plan. And uh, Tita mentioned most of the strategies that will be uh, adopted or are in the process already now. Uh, some have been adopted recently, like mental health strategy, very important. But there is also, of course, digitalization, as he has mentioned, public health strengthening, primary health care strategy also. All these strategies are a kind of guarantee that uh, we um, uh, have awareness of where we want to go, uh, the goals are defined, the vision is there, so we just have to move. And luckily, somehow, uh, COVID uh, is an opportunity too, it's not just a challenge. And um, uh, now we are speaking of health, uh, not only in health sector, but um, the whole government is there to discuss health. I think this is very supportive. Uh, Tit has mentioned that there are additional resources available. There will be investment in health systems in the next years, which will improve our um, um, uh, capacities uh, uh, enormously. And there is also something that is very clear now, the workforce. We have to invest in the workforce uh, in uh, many different ways but definitely the workforce plan needs to be adopted in Slovenia. Uh, be, uh, and certainly this is true, for example, for primary healthcare, which is and has been our priority before, is still our priority. So much has been done in terms of introducing prevention there, but so much needs to be done also in the future because we have to evaluate what we have produced. Uh, and these are innovative things uh, many of them were actually developed here. We didn't copy any models. We just developed it here for, for um, uh, the reason that we already had a strong uh, primary health care, but there was a very clear, um, uh, clear uh, ambition that we should also include preventive services and that we should challenge inequalities in health and get, uh, get vulnerable people to services, which is often uh, a challenge that nobody thinks of. I mean, we have all these wonderful services in healthcare, but how to actually get those people that are most vulnerable into the services. I think we've done a lot in this regard. And here, here, of course, we have now to evaluate and after evaluating, see what has been done well and where are the needs to change and adapt. And while doing so, Slovenia is uh, and will be in the next years uh, trying to work together with other countries because some kind of a peer review from others or exchanging good practices is enormously important. Yeah. And this is where we are going uh, to be um, um, investing a lot in the future. We have done something already during our presidency where we looked at innovation and how at EU level we could innovate better, but we have also in the past and now been very eager to work with WHO, with the observatory and other entities, but also with other countries, for example, in primary health care very much with Austria um, and uh, with Italy. We are now going to work together also with Belgium, Austria uh, mm -hmm. and us mm -hmm. together. Um, 
and using uh, and trying to develop something with EU. So there are a lot of things that uh, we are working on, will be working on. Of course, uh, challenges remain, like how to implement long-term care. Uh, Stit mentioned also how to challenge the, the, um, uh, the waiting times. Here, I maybe should mention that we are also looking uh, how to increase health literacy and empower patients because you know that we are one of those countries where visits are still very high, higher than average uh, visits to doctor are higher than average in you. So there, there are plenty of things to do. Uh, the good news, we have plans, we are developing uh, plans and uh, we are eager to monitor what, uh, how, how effective we are and what is uh, the impact of what we do all the time. I think this is a kind of a guarantee for the future. A key, a key lesson here, a key lesson here, Vesna, have a clear plan. One of the lessons we got as we're studying the impact uh, of COVID and the impact of strategies to strengthen the resilience of the health systems is have a clear plan. And I like very much, which is very much, a, uh, very much in the genes of the Slovenians, this need to evaluate candidly and learning from what you've done. But let me push you forward a, a tiny bit more. Uh, uh, let, let, let's talk about, uh, let's, you already mentioned some of that, but what is that other countries can learn from Slovenia? I like to comment on that as well, uh, but you, as you said, you work a lot with other countries, the tradition here, part of the genes as well is to learn from each other, collaborate across organizations, across countries. If you had to choose some of your babies, which ones would you put forward to, um, to share with other countries? And very much what we're doing tomorrow, actually, tomorrow in the Council of Ministers, in formal Council of Ministers, you'll be talking about platforms to share and learn from each other. What would be the babies you would put on the table uh, to share with other countries? Definitely uh, one of the things that countries already are eager to learn from us. We have a lot of visits from other countries to Slovenia. Uh, missions uh, is about how we manage to introduce more preventive services um, and uh, tackle the problems of chronic diseases in primary health care. Uh, primary health care has always been strong in Slovenia, but uh, uh, this is exactly the reason why we want to invest even more and make it even stronger. And uh, here we, as I said before, uh, were very eager to innovate, to try different models, to first uh, pilot these models and we used a lot of uh, different resources. For example, Norwegian funds were used, uh, uh, cohesion funds were used for, for this purpose. Uh, and then we didn't stop there. And this is, I think, something that others could learn uh, from us. We have always, um, uh, from the start, um, uh, we were thinking of how to systemize what was innovative and developed. So innovation, yes, but you have, in advance to think of how to then put it into the system. Otherwise, the money is gone and the project is exactly. not anymore there. So this is something that others could learn from us. I think we are doing it well in primary health care, at least. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that I would mention is this international um, cooperation. Slovenia is a small country. Our capacities are scarce and we usually have only few people working in one area so this is not a critical mass to produce something so we use international capacities either we work with professionals from who you know very well that we use your capacities in observatory very often and ask you to cooperate with us to develop something new or to analyze uh, or to produce analysis from us, comparisons uh, with other countries so that we can do something uh, better. And then also WHO, of course, is always uh, a partner that we are keen to work with. Uh, that is another thing that I would say Slovenia is really good at. We are not asking for technical support. We are asking to work together and develop Excellent. something new and then share with others. This is what Slovenia is doing. The third thing that I would want to say is that Slovenia has always been very eager to, uh, to focus on inequalities. Uh, um, especially in health, people here in Slovenia are used to, you know, we are all equal when it comes to health. And we uh, try to keep this and uh, the real the challenge is the vulnerable groups, uh, those that are most privileged and how to get to them. And I mentioned it before, uh, here we are, um, 
elaborating actually for years now how to get the NGOs that are there where people live uh, in the community, uh, I won't say right, but how to get them to help us and to work with us hand in hand, health sector and the NGOs to bring these people in or to get the messages to them where they are, uh, because uh, very often we have wonderful programs, but the attendance of exactly those people that are most in need uh, is not good because they either they don't participate, they don't come to the center or the message doesn't get to them because they don't use all these uh, sophisticated uh, applications and so on that we are now using. So th this is the third thing that I would also expose, working hand in hand with NGOs, community community and all the services in community. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much for this emphasis on implementation of innovation, implementation of change uh, that you are putting on your uh, council, informal council of ministers and your council conclusions. Let me now move to uh, Doble Jo. You mentioned a lot Doble Jo and indeed Doble Jo has been very supportive, has worked very closely uh, with the Slovenia and I like, it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, Natasha Azopardi Muscat, the Director of Public Health and Health Services Health Systems Department in Copenhagen, WHO Euro. Natasha, uh, some reflections on the Slovenian experience, uh, on what you learned, how you worked so closely with the Slovenia over the years. I believe as well that you just finished a mission looking at primary health care here in Slovenia. I'm sorry to Vesna, I'm sorry to Natasha. And I'm sorry to the next presenter as well, to Natalie, for the little time we give you five minutes each, but we are a bit tight on time. Natasha, thank you very much again for joining us. Over to you. Good afternoon, and it's always good to see you, Josep and Vesna. And I think I will just echo and compliment a number of points that Vesna has raised. Indeed, Slovenia is a small country, but also an innovative country. And within this context, when change is implemented, the results are immediately visible. And I think this is also very encouraging when we do this kind of groundbreaking work. And I thank Slovenia for being an active participant also in our small countries network, where we try to bring these capacities very much in a practical way on the ground. Of course, I mean, there is a lot that Slovenia is really um, a, model, a model country for. Uh, I, I would like again to highlight the importance of the work on financial protection and really when you talk about keeping equity and financial protection at the forefront, it's not just empty words because we see very much the results in practice. But I think as um, part of our universal health coverage objectives, we of course need to look very closely at delivery and many countries are increasingly encountering problems with their delivery because of challenges with the health workforce, not least now um, at the moment where we are seeing that a number of countries are facing burnout of their health workforce and are facing attrition and are unable to replace the health workforce as quickly as people are leaving either due to aging or because of the impact that the COVID pandemic has had on practice. And I think this is an area which for small countries already four years ago, WHO, identified as a key priority that needs to be addressed and we are working very closely. The solutions are not easy and here is where we need to really think outside the box and where, for example, investment in digital with a purpose needs to become also part of our more visible mission. Why? Because we need to ensure that the investments that we are making in digital technologies really go towards supporting, complementing the efforts of a scarce workforce, both quantitatively and qualitatively. And here, we are very keen to work with Slovenia. Again, thank you for mentioning the mission on primary health care, where we are seeing that with Slovenia, we are working to make sure that, uh, as our regional director often likes to say, we go from good to great, and we focus our attention now from just the model of care, which is good, to really sustaining that model of care by ensuring that we have the right workforce, we make use of the right technologies to reach the people who we need to reach at the right point in time. Um, finally, I, I would also like to thank Slovenia 
for its support and recognition of the need to really do joint work in the area of medicines. And here again, Slovenia as a small country with a small market is one of those countries that really understands the work that we are trying to support as WHO with the Oslo Medicines Initiative, but wider than that, the importance of really rethinking what needs to be done to guarantee access to medicines, both the older medicines that often disappear from the market before because of shortages, but also the novel medicines that still um, elude far too many Far too many countries are excluded, far too many people who can benefit within countries are excluded because the model and the system really needs to be rethought. Um, uh, perhaps the last point that I would like to mention is that, of course, we know that those countries that have fared better than others in the governance of this pandemic and now as we support health systems recovery depend very much on a strong public health system. And here again, my thanks to the National Institute of Public Health, who we cooperate very closely with, who are always there to support and implement. WHO can only do so much. We need the partners on the ground to be able to work with. And uh, I think that Slovenia is an excellent example of a country, as Vesna said very well, where we are working together, learning from each other and taking positive experiences that can be shared with other countries, as we will be doing also now with the quality of care office that we have launched in Athens, which will have a sub-regional focus with the Western Balkan countries, of course, being a priority. And once again, over here, we look forward very much to working with Slovenia to continue to support Slovenia in its own efforts to further the development of quality of healthcare within Slovenia itself, but also to really see how we can share that experience together with the neighboring countries. Thank you very much for this opportunity and back to you, dear Joseph. Thank you very much, Natasha. First, for the beautiful way that you built and you echoed the comments of Vesna and the development in this country and you showed the broader lessons across the region. I'd like now to move uh, to uh, Nathalie Berger, Director of the Division of Support to Member States Reforms at DG Reform. Uh, Nathalie, uh, congratulations to you, to your directorate, uh, for the enormous work you're doing in supporting member states in the transformation of systems as well. Tomorrow, uh, the work you're doing will be very much echoed by the Slovenian presidency in the informal council of ministers. So the question, therefore, begs the question of, can you give us a flavor, I'm sorry for the little time that we give to each one of you, of the kinds of programs, of the, the comprehensive kinds of programs you are putting in place to support the reforms in, in health in member states. The floor is yours, Nathalie. Thank you very much, uh, Joseph, and dear Minister Pokluka, uh, dear Director General Patrick, and, and ladies and gentlemen, it's a, it's a great pleasure. Uh, to be here with you for the launch event of Slovenia's health system review. It is such an important project and we are really, really delighted uh, to be standing by your side uh, to bring our technical analysis, to bring it to a fruitful, a fruitful completion. It is an extremely important project and uh, I would say it can be in a way representative of the type of model reforms and policy initiatives uh, that uh, we like to support in DG reform. So what do we do? We help member states to implement growth enhancing reforms linked to their national priorities and to the policy priorities of the European Union. Our common policy priorities. And here today we have the Slovenian presidency at the forefront of making, of driving the impetus and the policy uh, on health in the European Union. We have been following very closely the preparation of the conclusions of the Slovenian presidency and we very much welcome the important work done in this regard. Uh, to bring our technical support, uh, we, of course, will listen to the needs of the public administration, the stakeholders, 
the um, citizens and we take time to understand their unmet needs. We discuss in depth, we co-create change and we create an environment that is ready for opportunities and innovations for all citizens. We want the forthcoming recovery to be really inclusive. In the area of health, we also help the member states to monitor the health of their health systems through the setup of health systems performance assessment frameworks. And uh, for example, the ultimate goal of the Latvian, Irish, Slovenian, Croatian and Estonian health system performance assessment frameworks are to support the improvement of the health performance with respect to the three main objectives of a public health system, namely equity, quality of care and financial sustainability. And of course, you know, we could not have imagined two or five years ago when the last review was published that the whole world would change so drastically. Health is an eminently national issue, of course, and we do very much respect this, but we have seen that a problem, a health problem, can very quickly spread over the world and become very global. So we need to unite and we need to work on this all together. Uh, beyond the sanitary and the human tragedy, the pandemic gave new impetus to the European spirit. The recovery plan for Europe offers an unprecedented ambition. We are going to spread 750 billion euros, 800 billion euros in current prices to help creating a new economy. And all there is about transformation, a transformation that is fair, digital, green and sustainable. And through our technical support in instruments, we provide support to the member states to make this transformation happen. Health is a key transformation area in many recovery and resilience plans of our member states. And it is our priority to support the member states in this game-changing endeavor in the area of the transformation of the health systems. We work with many member states on this, and I can give some examples. We work with Belgium, Estonia, Croatia, Greece, Czechia on the digital transformation of the health systems. Here in Slovenia and in Spain, we provide technical support to set up a telemedicine infrastructure. We contribute to the establishment of integrated multidisciplinary primary care services in Austria, Spain, Portugal, and Hungary. We strengthen public health, building up the capacity of the national authorities to combat antimicrobial resistance in Latvia. We prepare the grounds for rolling out evidence-based cancer screening programs in Romania. We work with France and Austria on sustainable solutions to tackle shortages of antibiotics and to secure the production of medicines in Europe. And of course, investment in people, and I'm thinking of services, networks, and education, are also crucial for the health sector. Digital health is a quickly growing sector, and we need a highly skilled health and care workforce to support the digital transformation for the ultimate benefit of people everywhere in Europe. We have decided to accompany the member state healthcare professionals on the journey of digital transformation. So you can see that uh, we are uh, intervening in a, in a very wide range of areas. Recently, we have heard from a few member states who would be interested in the creation of a European health hub that would enable health authorities to identify, to understand, and to use available EU support and funding instruments 
we could build a, a project and I think that your member state is highly interested and I'm very grateful for this around this hub. Tomorrow, you will have the pleasure to listen to our commissioner, Mrs. Geriakides, and she will tell you more about the different EU measures in place for strengthening the health systems, the EU health union, and the EU for health programs. To finish, let me borrow the words from Yuval Noah Harari, the author of Sapiens and Homo Deus and the world after corona, the coronavirus. I thought some of his words were really interesting. Humanity needs to make a choice. We will travel down the route of disunity or will, will we adopt the path of global solidarity? If we choose this unity, this will not only prolong the crisis, but it will probably result in even worse catastrophes in the future. If we choose global solidarity, it will be a victory, not only against the coronavirus, but against all future epidemics and crises that might assay humankind in the 21st century. Let's all think together about this. Thank you very much. Very, very fitting words. Uh, thank you very much, Nathalie. Indeed, uh, fitting words are linked to the debate tomorrow. Uh, we are in the same boat. Uh, we don't row together. We're going to sink. And thank you, all, thank you also for this emphasis on performance assessment on evidence to support change, something which is very much at the close of my heart, close to my heart as observatory, Slovenia, and definitely the WHO as well. <clears throat> Let me wrap that up. I'm sorry, being a bit of a lousy chair, and we are slightly behind. We started five minutes behind. But so let me ask you to wrap up this wonderful, very, very good session with a tweet. <clears throat> a tweet for meditation, perhaps. A tweet for meditation about what we learned today in this session. And I will start in the order that we started the webinar. We'll start perhaps first with Tit, Tit Albrecht. Literal tweet for meditation on. What would you like us to stay in our minds uh, uh, in terms of the uh, reforms in Slovenia? Then we'll go to Kate, and then we'll go to the three panelists. Tit, briefly, one tweet from you. Um, I would pick the one that was the last message that we put on our joint presentation. So what seemed impossible or extremely challenging was made possible with a by a mixture of factors. And as Vesna mentioned, uh, COVID is not only uh, a huge uh, shakeup of all of our systems, but it's also an opportunity to then really push to solve these uh, issues that we thought couldn't have been uh, solved before. And I think that the determination uh, long tweet. We, this is a long tweet. Tit. A long, a long tweet. Just, just one sentence more. A determination that you want to solve, of course, will bring you to solutions. If you don't, if you lack determination, then you know. Uh, so hashtag determination would be uh, instead of the last part of the sentence. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you very much, Tit. Uh, Kate, you must be relieved to see your baby there after the enormous amount of work you and your colleagues have put on that. Congrats again to you, Kate. What's your tweet? Thank you, Giuseppe. Um, I'm, <clears throat> I'll try to stick to 120 characters, but I think I would focus on hashtag digitalization or e-health. Um, it will be very interesting to see how the new advancements in legislation around digital health um, codify or um, amplify the already, already uh, ambitious e-health uh, agenda, um, especially for HSPA moving forward and providing continuity of service provision also to the most vulnerable, speaking to Vesna. So hashtag digital health. Perfect, thank you. Vesna. Uh, coming from the ministry, I would say governance is key for the success. And uh, if we want to have a good governance and good decision making, we have to have informed decision makers. And to have them informed, we have to invest. 
And here I can show you, this is an investment into good decision-making because reading these people will under those that decide and are maybe not health workers, not into health very much, maybe finance ministers will understand better what is at stake. So um, my hashtag would be governance is key. Perfect. Natasha, I know you would be actually echoing many of those, but you have to put a new one, <laughs> a new I won't, I won't put a new one. I will put one that we have been using at WHO for the past year and a half now, which is uh, the motto of our European program of work, United Action for Better Health. I would like to add, Slovenia is leading the way within the country with its intersectoral work, but also showing us and linking to what Natalie said earlier, that the only way that we can really solve some of these challenging and complex problems is if we work together, together as countries, together as regions, together as stakeholders, together as international organizations. Thank you. Bravo, bravo indeed. I hope uh, colleagues, uh ministers hear us for tomorrow as well, because that's a very pro EU and broader European collaboration uh, within the region of Doble Joe. And Nathalie, the last Twitter of the day. Thank you, Josep. I would uh, echo Natasha's uh, tweet, and uh, I would have maybe three words or three hashtags. One, which is EU solidarity. The second one would be hashtag EU reforms and then EU health for all uh, under the lead of our fantastic Slovenian presidency. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> very nice how the stars today of uh, Slovenia, Doble Joe and the Commission are really aligning together with always the support of the observatory behind, which is a privilege for us to be behind and working with all of you. Thank you very much indeed. Can I ask you to join us again tomorrow? Sorry to take so much of your time, but tomorrow is also really spectacularly beautiful, exciting. I sound like President Trump with so much beautiful today, right? <laughs> but truly, uh, tomorrow we have a, a presentation of the work that we did together with the Slovenian presidency and the European Commission, Natalie, and definitely showcasing as well Doble Joe on the range of instruments that we have at the European level to uh, support uh, the member states and how we need to use those, strengthen them. And Natalie was already mentioning at the hub to coordinate and bring those together. Tomorrow at 1.30, an opportunity there as well to take some of your comments and have a bit more of a debate. I'm sorry we couldn't have more time today, but thank you very much indeed to panelists, to presenters, and particularly you participants in the webinar for lending us your time today. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.